Thank you, Agape Ringers. Always such a pleasure to hear you and such an appropriate piece to be playing this morning. Next, our uh, choir will begin with the choral introit, Jesus Keep Me Near the Cross, as soon as our singers get to the back. This morning I'm going to read A Prayer for Ukraine by Kayla Craig. Please pray with me. O God of peace, our hearts are heavy and our brains can barely keep up with the breaking news. We don't know what to say or what to do in a world so wounded. So we come to you with hearts heavy for all who sit in the crossfires of violence and acts of war. O God of peace, Be with the people of Ukraine, with the mothers who carry babies to subway shelters, with the fathers who hold their heads in their hands, with the children who absorb the trauma of violent acts of powerful men. O God of peace, we don't know the words to pray for a warring world and all who are vulnerable in it. We don't pretend to know the extent of the damages or what tomorrow or today will bring, but we know that you are a God of peace and we can't bomb our way to shalom. O God of peace, comfort the crying and heal the hurt. Tend the aching and soothe the fearful. Make us instruments of your peace, creating a sacred symphony where rhythms of grace are danced upon and evil has lost its sting now and forevermore. O God of peace, hear our prayer. Amen. Please join me in the call to worship that's found in your bulletin. One thing I have asked of the Lord that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in the Lord's temple. Our first hymn this morning is number 547 in the blue hymnal, O Church of God United, number 547.
opening prayer. We ask you, O Lord, for the gifts of your spirit. Enable us to penetrate the depth of the whole truth and grant that we may share with others the good you have put at our disposal. Teach us to overcome divisions. Send us your spirit to lead to full unity, your sons and daughters in full charity, in obedience to your will, through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Good morning. Good morning. What defines a person? If you had to say who you are without saying, let's say, Will, who you are, what would you do? How would you introduce yourself, who you are, any of you? What makes you, you? Well, you could start with the obvious, I'm a boy or I'm a girl, you know, you could start with that. But there are other things that make us who we are. Um, the things that we love help decide who we are. Um, the way we act, the way we behave. Uh, for example, if you were a mean person that picked on people smaller than you, you know, you would be defined as a bully, wouldn't you? Yeah, I mean, so don't do that. But if you were someone that, let's say somebody tripped and they dropped something and you helped pick it up and give it back to them, then you would be defined as a nice person. So our behavior, the way we act, defines us. But what also defines us are the things that we hold as most important, like family and like our faith, our belief in God and our love for Jesus. That defines who we are. And, it's, and as we get older, we learn that the things that define us, that explain us, have very little to do with what you see and have almost everything to do with how you behave. So when you are trying to decide who you're going to be when you grow up, most of the time people talk about what they want their work to be, and that can define them too. But most important are the things that you love. So choose wisely what and who you will love, because that defines you. And a good place to start is in loving Jesus. Let's pray together. For minds that think and eyes that see, thank you, God, for loving me. Amen. You can go to Sunday school now. <clears throat> Good morning. I'm Sue Snell, and I'm a member of the Loving Stitches Quilting Group. Um, we've been in existence about eight years now, and we make quilts like you see here on the back of the organ. And a friend of ours from another state who used to go to Asbury, Karen Brown, made the one that is hanging up there and sent it to us for Easter. So quilting is very special to this church. We also made the banners that hang on the um, round circles there on the whatever those things, pillars, thank you very much. And um, so we're, we're proud to be able to do this to serve, to serve you and to serve the Lord. One of the things, um, this particular quilt, we would like to give to someone special this morning. Um, and she has been with us um, several years now. And we, we really, she's going to be moving soon. And we would like her to have a remembrance of Asbury United Methodist Church. And that would be, stop looking at your book. That would be <laughs> Martha Pizer, right here. Would you stand up, Martha, please? This is, this is the quilt that we would like to give to you. Oh to take with you and remember us by. We love you.
I want to share our joys and concerns this morning, certainly what's happening in Ukraine and our just enthusiasm for the people of Poland and other countries who are just taking people into their own homes mm -hmm. and feeding them and giving them a place to sleep. Um, and schools that are starting up so children can have something normal to do other than living in fear. Uh, continued prayers for Bill Hickox. Safe travel for our daughter Sharon, who is pregnant with twins. A joy, Grace is happy to meet her sister and husband, who are from Great Britain. Carol wishes to express her thanks for the calls, cards, foods, and prayers. I'm glad she's here. And we are glad that you're here, too. Continued prayers for Dwayne Lehman as he continues radiation and chemo treatment. Prayers for Janet Knight being treated for leukemia. Prayers for Yvonne Cornell who is in a nursing home with Parkinson's. And we want to remember the family of Helen Stretch. Helen is a sister to, to Glenn and she passed away this weekend. Let us pray together. Lord, we thank you so much for the way in which you create for us a kind of armor that makes it possible for us to continue to stand firm in our faith that reminds us to look also when we see violence and damage, to also look at the ones who are helping and seek ways that we too might help. Lord, we thank you for our children and ask your blessing upon the education program here. Lord, we thank you for generous hearts and willingness to share skills and talents and gifts for your glory. We thank you that we can come to you this morning with the prayers that we have shared, trusting that you hear our prayer and also respond in time and so we thank you. Bless our efforts to be faithful. Strengthen our resolve to be people of hope. And help us to reach out with love and concern to a world that is hurting. We ask this in Jesus' name, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our first scripture reading is from Deuteronomy, chapter 23, verse 1. I'll be reading from the New International Version. 
No one who has been emasculated by crushing or cutting may enter the assembly of the Lord. No one who has been, excuse me, I'm sorry. He that is wounded in the stones or hath his privy cut off shall not enter into the assembly of Jehovah. Our second reading is from Acts chapter 8, verses 26 through 39. Now an angel of the Lord said to Philip, Go south to the road, the desert road, that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. So he started out, and on his way he met an Ethiopian eunuch, an important official in the charge of all the treasury of the Kandake, which means queen of the Ethiopians. This man had gone to Jerusalem to worship, and on his way home was sitting in his chariot reading the book of Isaiah the prophet. The spirit told Philip, Go to that chariot and stay near it. Then Philip ran up to the chariot and heard the man reading Isaiah the prophet. Do you understand what you are reading? Philip asked. How can I, he said, unless someone explains it to me. So he invited Philip to come up and sit with him. This is the passage of scripture the eunuch was reading. He was led like a sheep to the slaughter, and as a lamb before its shearer is silent. So he did not open his mouth. In his humiliation, he was deprived of justice. Who can speak of his descendants? For his life was taken from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, Tell me, please, who is the prophet talking about, himself or someone else? Then Philip began with that very passage of scripture and told him the good news about Jesus. As they traveled along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, Look, here is water. What can stand in the way of my becoming baptized? And he gave orders to stop the chariot. Then both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord suddenly took Philip away, and the eunuch did not see him again, but went on his way rejoicing. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks Thanks be to God. God. Our second hymn is number 550. Uh, Christ, whom, from whom all blessings flow, we will be doing verses 1, 2, 5, and 6, number 550. Five, Please pray with me. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts together be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, for you are our rock and our salvation. Amen. As I began with the children, I asked this question is what is it that defines a person? During the Senate confirmation 
hearings for our nominee to the Supreme Court, she was asked this question, what is a woman? I'm sorry, what? Well, you know, uh, but it is, I mean, that's, that is a question. What is a woman? What is a man? What is a human being? You know, last week, there was a woman who was defined by her profession, which was a prostitute. But then later, she was defined as a woman with tremendous gratitude and effusive uh, demonstrations of love for Jesus, who had forgiven her of her sin. And that is how we remember her today. We remember her for her gestures of love, not from the profession she had before. We're defined by many things. We're defined by our profession. Who are you? Well, she's a pastor, or he's an engineer, or she's a doctor, or he's a teacher, and so those things kind of define us, but hopefully that's not the only thing by which we define ourselves, or in retirement, we're going to find that we're at a tremendous loss and don't know what to do with ourselves. I have an alarming number of colleagues who, when they reached their retirement maturity, they resigned from being a pastor, but had never cultivated any other sides to themselves, so are now in retirement continuing to serve churches because it's all they know. That's how they define themselves. Some people define themselves as a parent, and that is a tremendous priority that is in a person's life, and then when the nest is empty, often go through a crisis. Well, without my providing direct care for my children anymore, who am I now? And there's a kind of crisis. We're defined by things that other people define us, by our behavior. But I think the thing that defines us the most is what we love most of all. Those are the things that are talked about at your funeral. The obituary might say where you worked, might say who your parents were and how many children you have, but it's those things that they loved and cared about the most. Whether it was a civic organization or a church or just their nature, when my husband died, we had, of course, the memorial stone for that, and his, the cr a cross is there and his full name and the date of birth and the date of death. But I wanted something there for the world to see um, long after I was a memory. And if children or grandchildren came to visit that place, they would be reminded about what he, who he was. And I spent oh, a good couple of months thinking about what I wanted it to say. And what it does say is he, was, he loved well and was well loved. That's what it says, loved well and was well loved. Because I think that sums him up, who he is as a person. Well, for all the formal language that was in the NIV version of Leviticus, basically what it was saying that if, uh, if a man is emasculated sexually, he cannot come to the temple of Jehovah. He's not worthy. He's not good enough. That that defined who he was. That that act which affected his sexuality defined him as a person, and he wasn't welcome anymore. Wow. 
It's not a well-used text, but it's there. So now we come to the book of Acts to a disciple of Jesus, Philip, and we believe Philip was the youngest disciple because he's the one that always asks the questions at Passover. And he receives a vision from the Spirit saying, I want you to go down this road, this desert road, and you'll meet someone there. You just need to go. So Philip, being given his holy marching or orders, goes down this road to this path, and when he's there, he meets a man who is dressed well in a carriage, reading out loud the book of Isaiah. Now, he did not have a name tag that said, I am an Ethiopian eunuch. But it was obvious that he was, one, by the darkness of his skin, and two, by the fact that he was reading in a soprano voice. Because those surgeries, those emasculations, were always done before a boy reached puberty. So he would just hear this, you know, big hunk of a man who's reading like this. And Philip would have known scripture. Philip would have known that this person is not worthy of God. If Philip was concerned about his outward appearance as being that which defined him as a person. But Philip knew in an instant that this was the person the Spirit had sent him to talk to. So he climbs up in the carriage, and as they're going along, he explains who this person is that the eunuch is reading about. He's told the good news about Jesus. They come to some water, and at that point, the eunuch looks at the water, and he said, well, what's to keep me from being baptized? Because it had been explained to him that being part of Jesus' followers involved baptism. Do you know that that was a test? That was a test. The eunuch was testing Philip. Am I or am I not worthy of this grace, this acceptance, this love? Do I count? Because he knew that, at least as he understood it, he did not count. And Philip said, Yes, let's go. And they went down to the water, and he was baptized, and when the eunuch came up, Philip was taken away in an instant. And the man went on with his life, rejoicing and praising God. And he was defined, at least in his own mind, by that going forward because he loved most of all this God who had brought Jesus the Christ and who had offered him grace and acceptance, and he now belonged. And heretofore, he didn't belong anywhere. He was no longer being defined as acceptable or not acceptable based upon his sexual situation. He was a part of the family of God now. That scripture is so contemporary in the culture in which we live. We have been too superficial as a people 
letting external things define one another. We need to dive deeper and look for those things that they love most of all. And if they are seeking faith and a relationship with God through Christ, our job is to be Philip, to explain it, to be a human bridge between that feeling ostracized and belonging. That's what Philip did. That's what we're called to do. To go deeper and find out the character of a person, and by that we define them. Do you know someone who has felt that they were not worthy to be in the church, or that maybe they were worthy, but they were shunned because of factors that made them made us tell them they were unacceptable. They're the ones we are to go down the road and seek and find and take by hand and bring them back to grace so that they too might belong and know the benefits of being in relationship with the author of life. Amen.
join me in the prayer of dedication. We offer to you, O oh God, a portion of our wealth, a larger portion of our hands, a full portion of our hearts. Please receive these gifts and bless them. Put all to good use for the work of your kingdom. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 555, Forward Through the Ages. Confident that even if you didn't know the words, the tune was familiar. Yes. Yeah. In the name of God, the author of life, in the name of Jesus Christ, who redeems our life, in the name of the Holy Spirit that sustains us in life, go forth from this place, renewed and at peace. Amen. Amen. Amen.